this evening. They have moved out of sight, but with their weapons intact and are not necessarily even out of range. The plan is to replace the airlift, which can only bring in limited supplies, with shipments and road convoys. The reopening of Kismayo port will open up a new corridor for desperately needed food. So far, Operation Restore Hope is running ahead of schedule. Carol Walker, BBC News, Kismayo. And that's it. The main news tonight is at 20 past 10. Good evening. We'll have problems with frost and fog this week as pressure remains high over the country. A slight change, though, for the next 24 hours as this set of weather fronts comes into the northwest. It'll bring some snow, too, to the mountains of Northern Ireland and Scotland in particular. But frost is of major importance at the moment. Frost over many parts of the country, in actual fact, already. And in Aviemore, it's down to minus 10 degrees. That frost remaining extensive throughout the country tonight, with the exception of the extreme south, and also wind and cloud coming into Northern Ireland and the Western Isles of Scotland by the morning will lift it away, but the wind's up to gale force in the Hebrides by tomorrow. Temperatures could get down to minus 4 to minus 7 degrees in many parts of Northern England and maybe Southern Scotland as well. Also some cloud in the extreme south, there could be the odd patch of rain or sleet returning to South West England and also some uh, patchy rain into the far northwest of Scotland too by tomorrow morning. Fog also becoming quite a problem, particularly further south. Well, tomorrow, if you're playing golf, luminous golf balls could be very handy indeed. There'll be a lot of frost around and there'll be some freezing fog patches. will take some time to clear away. They could, in fact, linger in one or two spots right through the day. That thicker cloud in the south pushing back across Wales and also outbreaks of snow pushing right across Scotland during the course of the day. Somewhat clearer weather returning to the northwest later on. On BBC Two now, there's a nostalgic tale of Christmas past set in suburban North America in the 1940s where a nine-year-old boy eagerly anticipates a major present in the film A Christmas Story. Sunday night on BBC One and seeing is believing at 7.15. The ghost of Christmas present is very much alive at 7.45. Mrs Feldman! So have you at least brought a present for your mother-in-law? Well, what do you buy a ghost? <laughs> See through nighty? <laughs> at 8.15, a childhood romance struggles to survive amid the prejudice and turmoil of 1940s Trinidad. Can Kayser and Jaden come to my party? Black crows, black crows, inside the window. Black crows, black crows. Hello. The festive spirits are a little lumpy at 9.35. They've been at it two hours, they only know four carols. The words of one of them's a bit suspect and all. <laughs> Shepherds didn't wear socks in them days, either. Putting you in the mood for Christmas this Sunday on BBC One. Well, now on one, a celebration of Christmas as Pam Rhodes introduces songs of praise from Windsor Castle. When we first started planning this special songs of praise Christmas celebration from Windsor Castle, we imagined sharing the joy and the pageant of Christmas with the people who live and work in this historic monument which is known and loved throughout the world. But between that planning and this programme, the sight of Windsor Castle in flames has shocked and saddened us all. And none so sad as the community for whom Windsor Castle is home, who still very much want to share with us their feelings, their faith and their Christmas. Thankfully, St George's Chapel is in the lower ward of the castle and so was unscathed by the fire, and it's there that our congregation is gathering now. Although St George's is not a parish church, many people from the town worship here regularly, joining the clergy, the choir and the military knights of Windsor for this Christmas, Songs of Praise. One, two, three. 